Yo, what's up boys, Aesthetic, and today I'm gonna be giving an updated 2025 tutorial on clipping with OBS Studio. I made this video a few years back and it went absolutely insane, so because I want more ad revenue, I mean because I want to help more people, I'm gonna make another tutorial going over some things that I didn't last time, as well as all the settings that you need. So I hope you guys enjoy, and let's get right into it. Starting off, when you first install OBS Studio here, you're going to launch it and it's going to look just like this. This is a fresh install of OBS Studio, so I'm going to show you guys exactly how to set everything up. First thing we're going to do is go to Settings, go to Output, and at the top, make sure this is on Advanced, not Simple. And now you can see the Replay Buffer. You're going to go ahead and enable this, and you're going to type the amount of seconds you want your clips to be. So I'm just going to type 60 for a minute. Hit apply and then hit OK. And now you will get this button right here that says start replay buffer. So anytime you click this button, um, it'll give you this warning the first time. And I'm going to show you guys how to set all this up. But anytime you click this button, it'll start the clipping. So now any point now you can hit this button to clip or we can set up a bind, which I will show you how to do. But for now, we're going to click stop. The first thing we need here is an actual source. So what you're going to do is go to the sources tab in the bottom left. You're going to right click. You're going to hit add and you're going to choose either display capture or a game capture if you just want to choose your whole screen you can do this and select whichever monitor you have so for example i want to record my whole screen at all times i can do this if you just want to record games you can add a game capture um, you can either have it automatically detect or you can change it to capture a specific window you know whatever you want so that's how you get it to actually show what you want to show and now I'm going to go over all the settings, how to make it start with Windows so you don't have to click this button every time, as well as just run in the background seamlessly. We're going to go ahead and go over to settings. First of all, uh, in the general tab, I uncheck automatically check for updates because I don't need them to check for updates every time. If you want it to automatically start to your system tray, and I'll show you what that means, if you double click this, it will not show up in, you know, like on your screen. You're going to have to go to your taskbar at the bottom right and then you'll be able to find it. So if you don't want it to show up when you start Windows, you can do that as well. Moving over to the Output tab, we're going to go to the Recording tab, and this is where all your settings like the encoder, your bitrate, and stuff like that is going to be. And we're going to change some of these. First of all, Recording Path. This is where your clips are going to end up. So this is where you're going to find all your clips once you're ready to look at them. You can hit Browse, and you can change this to wherever you want. The recording format, we're going to change this to MPEG4, MP4. This just makes it MP4. You'll get this little warning here, but it doesn't matter. Video encoder. Now, this is going to depend on your system. If you have the, if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, you're going to want to use NVENC H264, this one that I've selected here. If you have an AMD card, I'm not quite sure what it's called, but it's going to be something H264 to do with AMD. And if you have neither of those, you're going to have to use X264, which is your CPU. Now this is going to be the worst off for performance, but if you have to use it, it'll still work. I'm going to select H.264 NVENC, and now scrolling down, we can ignore the audio encoder. We can ignore the audio tracks unless you know what you're doing and you want to set up multiple audio tracks, but I'm not going to go over that here. Rescale output, if you want, you can rescale it to a different resolution. I wouldn't recommend doing that. Moving on to the encoder settings, this is where we're actually going to change stuff. So the rate control. Instead of constant bitrate, you're going to change it to constant QP. And now, how this works is the lower the number, the higher the quality. I would recommend either using 20, 22, 18, something close to 20, and it'll look just fine. Keyframe interval, we can keep this on auto. Preset, probably keep this on auto unless you're experiencing issues. Tuning, you can try choosing low latency or ultra low latency, but if you think it makes your clips look too bad, you can change it back to high quality. And that's about it for this tab. And now in the replay buffer, you will see this maximum memory thing. You could probably keep this default. The only reason you would have to change this is if you had like extremely long clips and this isn't enough memory to for how big your clips are, then you have to change it. But moving on to the audio tab, um, the sample rate, just keep it 48. You can change it to 44.1 if you want, but it's not needed. Desktop audio, select whatever your desktop audio is. Mic, select your mic, obviously. And that's about it for here. You don't need to change anything else. Hit apply, go to video. And now for the base canvas resolution, you're gonna change it to your monitor's like resolution. Whatever your monitor's resolution that you're running is, change it there. And change the second one to the exact same thing so they match. 
FPS, keep it on 60, unless you want to run a lower FPS. That's obviously your choice. Hotkeys, and now we're going to find a hotkey. We're going to scroll down until you find the replay buffer. Save replay, make this whatever you want. For example, I use control F. You can make this whatever bind that you want to use to clip. And that will only work, that bind will only work if this is going. So as you can see, if I hit control F, it says it saved it to the replay, right? And finally, in the settings in advance, scroll down and uncheck browser source hardware acceleration hit okay and it'll make you restart obs and now i'm going to show you guys how to make it so you don't have to click start replay buffer and minimize every single time you launch your windows it'll just do it automatically so starting off find your obs studio shortcut on your desktop you're going to go ahead and right click it hit properties and now it'll bring up the properties tab you're going to find the shortcut tab it should automatically be on it you're going to go to the very end of this target you're going to hit space and type dash dash start replay buffer just like this i'll put it in the description you're gonna hit apply you're gonna hit continue if it gives this prompt and then hit okay now every time you launch the shortcut as you can see it automatically starts the replay buffer with it obviously if you have the setting to minimize it to the tray like i do it, you won't show up but it'll be in the background running and now i'm going to show you guys how to start it with windows so every time you open your pc it'll automatically launch you don't have to you don't even have to open it you're going to hit Windows and R at the same time to bring up the run menu. You're going to type shell colon common space startup. And this is the common startup folder. And now once you have this folder open, you're going to go ahead and drag the studio shortcut in here. If you need administrator permission, you can do that. But once it's in here, every single time you open your PC, it will automatically launch. And you can just hit your bind whenever you want to save a replay. So once you have all of that finally set up, you're now ready to play your game as you normally would, and you can just hit your bind whenever you want to clip, and it will automatically do it for you. You don't have to touch anything. If you want to watch it, open File Explorer, go to your videos, and it'll be in this folder. Obviously, these are my recordings, but it will be here or wherever you changed it in the settings. And now if you have NVIDIA app, GeForce Experience, or whatever AMD software is, you can now turn off the clipping or uninstall NVIDIA app, you know, because you no longer need that horrible software and you are good to go. So now you have the absolute best way to clip with OBS Studio. It will literally just run in the background every time. You don't even have to touch it. All you have to do is hit your mind whenever you want to clip something and it'll clip exactly to what you want. So I appreciate you guys so much for the support on not only the last tutorial I made, but my channel in general. If you like this video and you want to support me, maybe check out some of my other videos. I post competitive Fortnite. So if you're into that, check out some of my other stuff. But that's about it for this video. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you.